Hello everyone, Alzi on the Great here, and welcome back to the Colorado State Dynasty. As today, we open Mountain West Conference play against the San Jose State Spartans. San Jose State comes in 4-1, and 2-0 in the Mountain West, while Colorado State's first game in the Mountain West this year will be against the Spartans. As this team has done pretty darn good this season, I should say. They have a road win at... Uh, Minnesota. They also took down Utah State and Hawaii. They currently lead the Mountain West West Division as Colorado State obviously sits at the bottom of the Mountain Division. And today marks a new uh, part of the season as the first four games were very difficult out of conference games for Colorado State. But the one home game that they did have against MTSU in that stretch was the closest we've ever come to a win. Can we get one today. It's an early kickoff here at Canvas Stadium as San Jose State and Colorado State get ready to do battle, but first, the coin toss. Colorado State so far has won every coin toss this season and they will win this one as San Jose State chose tails and it is heads. Colorado State kicks just as they have all season and San Jose State defends with the wind. And the Spartans will start off from the 25 with Nick Starkle at quarterback. As on first and 10, take the snap and head off to the running back, Tyler Nevins, as he gets out to the 30, out to the 35, and will get a first down of 14 yards. Usually a stout Colorado State run defense, but they get a big chunk on that play as they'll spread it out with five wide on the next play. Starkle, three-man rush. Not really under pressure, throws, and somehow that's caught by Isaiah Holiness for 11 yards. Two plays, two first downs for San Jose State, as once again they spread it out wide. Starkle trying to jump off sides, does not get it. The blitz comes, but doesn't get there as he dumps it off to his receiver underneath, who breaks a tackle and gets even further. That's Terrence Lowville as he gets 15 yards, and San Jose State is rolling right now on this Colorado State defense. As on first and ten, he'll hand off to Tyler Nevins, who does manage to get five yards. The first play that was not a first down from San Jose State. As once again, they spread it out wide, but motion and jet sweep. And this play will be stopped as Terrence Lowville loses a yard. That's Cameron Carter making uh, the tackle for loss there. As that'll bring up third and six. Nevins right beside Starkle in the backfield as it will be a pass. Starkle throws short across the middle and caught, and it will be inside the red zone, goes Trevon Sidney for 15 yards. San Jose State not having much of a hard time moving against Colorado State's defense. As five wide once again, only three man drop, and this will be a quick pass to Isaiah Holiness for four. As now Nevins re-enters the backfield alongside Starkle in an offset. It's an option, a broken tackle, and then that's a fumble. No, they're going to call it an incomplete pass. As I think that looked like a fumble to me. He didn't pass it backwards. Looked like it. He didn't pass it forwards. I mean, I don't know. Third and six. As Starkle throws short across the middle and inside the five goes Jermaine Braddock for 10 yards. And San Jose State is not only knocking on the door, but looking to kick it in. As Colorado State almost jumps off sides, but they'll hand off to Nevins, and he gets in for a two-yard touchdown run flawless from San Jose State on that first drive. Getting the start today, his second on the season will be Giles Pooler, as A. John Nevins joins him in the backfield on first and ten for Colorado State. The first play, Pooler on a pass, decides to pull it down, but he was spied the entire way, and he gets wrecked for three yards as Colorado State still employing their hurry up. Maybe San Jose State has actually been looking at some tape with that spy, but second and seven, quick pass, and it is caught by Dante Wright, and they missed a blatant face mask as no penalty flag, but Colorado State still hurries up regardless. Read option, Pooler pulls it back, and he gets taken down by the face mask as well, but there is a flag on this play. So they missed one, but they managed to get the other, That'll be a 15-yard penalty on Ryan Nixon, the corner, as Colorado State will take over 
at the 49 and a half yard line if such a yard line exists as Pooler fakes the handoff and he'll try to run but he gets sacked four yard loss there as Cade Hall makes his impact known one of their best defenders on the edge second and 14 Pooler under a little bit of pressure but he throws to Tanner Arkin who catches it and gets back to the line of scrimmage actually a little bit further as it'll be third and nine for Colorado State still hurrying up per the usual as Pooler making adjustments trying to get the play to what he wants making another one as he snaps the ball under pressure pulls down again and he fumbled Vivens picks it up and a disastrous play for Colorado State leave it at fourth and 25 as there was no chance once he pulled it down this will lead to San Jose State taking over after a not good punt to say the least it will be a draw to Nevins who breaks through Cameron Carter and scampers for 15 yards and gets taken down as Nevins so far is chewing up this Colorado State defense on the ground not usually something you'd see as this time he gets stopped in the backfield for Azira Yorosh looks actually like he got back to the line of scrimmage. Bam Amina, the best linebacker we have, made the play there. Now on second and ten. Starkle under pressure and sacked. Finally, an early sack for Colorado State. Corner blitz, I think. Actually, that's linebacker Daquan Jackson as it'll be third and 18. San Jose State two for two, but they're going to have to draw up a really good play to convert here. Starkle under a little bit of pressure again and he'll be sacked again for the first time this season back-to-back -back sacks for Colorado State it's Mo Kamara who does this one and now from the 21 yard line Pooler alone in the backfield on Colorado State's second drive almost sacked but he does manage to get it out to Dante Wright who gets 11 yards first down for Colorado State as we're hurrying up once again Pooler in the pocket and he'll get sacked. Eight yard loss on third and ten there as we had Nick Luke pass. That is Viliami Bihoko, one of their best defensive linemen. So we're facing once again another talented defensive line. As first play for San Jose State on the next drive is a draw to Tyler Nevins. He only gets five, but it's a pretty good gain there. As it'll be second and five, obviously, because five minus or ten minus five is five as it'll be an option play, and it gets it out to the wide receiver, Lowville, but he only gets one good run defense there from Colorado State. That makes it third and four. Trips to the bottom of the screen. I think it's trips anyways. Blitz coming, does not get there, and the pass is dropped. As it'll be fourth and four, San Jose State will punt. Only 10 plays so far for Colorado State as Pooler's still in at quarterback. This will be first and 10 from the 10. He pulls back the option, but only gets three as Colorado State's still hurrying up. Switches to stacks as wide receivers spread out very wide. As ball not being snapped yet, Pooler will do it after maybe considering an adjustment, and maybe he should have made it as he gets sacked for 10 yards on the corner blitz. Lando Gray, the linebacker or defensive lineman, I think, got there. And, uh, I put this play in, this play selection in, because we were backed up at like the three. This is where the punt ended up. We didn't go for it. That's one yard beyond the first down marker. A terrible punt from Patty, as I remember his first name, but not his last name. Starkle, quick throw across the middle to his receiver, Derek Deese Jr. He gets four. But San Jose State gifted with this short field. What can they do? Will they hike it before the end of the first quarter? Yes. A quick draw to Nevins. And that'll be a one-yard gain. San Jose State threatening, but after one, only 7 nothing. as we swap sides of the field. It'll be third and five. Pretty big one to start the second quarter. As it's a screen, he throws it to the inside receiver, and they do not get it. Isaiah Hamilton only got three as Colorado State holds, and we'll see if they're able to hit the field goal as they do not it is a missed field goal and Colorado State takes over the defense showing up early against the best in the west of the Mountain West as Pooler under pressure throws it short but Vivens just loses two yards not 
the best decision there. Colorado State still hurrying up, though. Now he hands it off to Vivens, who will get that yardage back and more as he gets five. And that sets up third and seven. As Colorado State needs to convert on these, we've been getting into way too many of these lately. Although the conversion percentage itself isn't terrible. As Cooler making some adjustments, snaps the ball. And he throws it underneath. Caught by Ty McCullough for six, but not a first down. Colorado State decides to go for it. Safety's creeping up for San Jose State. Adjustment made. They creep back. Now they're creeping up again. Another adjustment made. Now the entire formation is being swapped. And they still creep up. San Jose State is confident with this safety blitz. I don't think they have anyone deep. As Pooler trying to make adjustments for his receivers. And he does. Fourth and one. He pulls it down. He, why did he pull it down? He probably had somebody open. A two-yard loss and a turnover. And the defense has uh, another short field to defend. As it be first and 10 from, I think, the 27 for San Jose State. As Starkle hands off to Nevins, and he is stopped. It is Bam Amina. Big Bam makes a play there. As it'll be a two-yard loss. Once again, run defense being pretty solid this game. Option play. This time, pitch out to Nevins, and he gets all of it back and more. Nobody was there to defend that. Because it's an 18-yard rush. Don't usually see a whole bunch of options. But San Jose State using them or utilizing them to full effect. As this handoff goes to Nevins as well. And he gets eight on that one inside the five. It'll be second and two. So there's still possibility for a first down. But obviously San Jose State looking for a touchdown. It is a fake to Nevins. Starkle shoves away a defender. And that will be... A three-yard touchdown. Taiwan Francis could not bring him down. And Pooler will come out with two running backs in the backfield. Normally, this is an option play, but he does make an adjustment. We'll see if they decide to do it. As, yes, it is actually a pass. And this is caught. And it is going down the field, streaking down the field, is Torrey Horton, number one receiver for 38 yards. Biggest play on the day for Colorado State as it'll be first and 10. And here's the triple option, as Pooler does not pitch it late, as it would be, and he gets 13, and Colorado State is moving very quickly down the field on this drive. Good to see, as they finally have some offensive momentum, and Pooler will throw it out to Ajon, who was in motion on that play, but he does not get back to the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard, is still in with the offset running back formation here. Pooler makes an, an adjustment. Now he's going to call out to a receiver. And he'll pull it down and run. Not ideal. Does not slide either. But he gets seven. And it'll be third and four for Colorado State. What can they do with this? Four man front two. More behind. Vivens in motion. And it's a fake. And it goes directly to Vivens, but he will not be able to get the first down. He won't even get back to the line of scrimmage. Two-yard loss, Bobby Brown, the second, makes the play. And it looks like Colorado State is going for the field goal. The kick is up and good. The only reason I watched this field goal, I actually called the field goal there, was to make sure that we actually kicked the field goal instead of going for it, because that really annoyed me last game. But we kicked the field goal, Colorado State... Gets on the board as Starkle with the option we take out Nevins, but Starkle himself can run as he was fighting off another Colorado State defender there as he gets out near the 40 to the, yeah, basically the 40 as it'll be second and 10 on the uh, next important play. Blitz coming up the middle does not get there as this is a catch for Travon Sidney distributing the wealth uh, so far as Starkle doing a pretty efficient job. So it'll be third and four and a draw to Nevins. Cameron cannot bring him down. As Carter almost got to him, but it's a first down for San Jose State. First and 10 as Starkle under pressure and sacked again. A three yard loss. CJ on Yechi gets him this time. And now split back formation. Colorado State knows this one well as it'll be a handoff. It's not Nevins, it's Kyrie Robinson as he avoids another tackler. And he gets taken down after five. It was actually Huber, the guy who got pushed away on uh, the first attempt. As it'll be third and eight for Starkle and San Jose State. He takes it. Short throw across the middle. Caught, but not a first down. 
Terrence Lowville cannot get there. As Bama Mina made another tackle, and it'll be Colorado State's ball. Giles Pooler got, has three minutes to work with in this game. He'll throw it across middle short to A. John Vivens, and there's a flag as Vivens got taken down by his face mask. Technically the third face mask penalty for San Jose State, but only the second one called as Cade Hall, who got the big sack earlier, was guilty in that one. As Pooler now, after the penalty, will almost get sacked, but he does manage to get at least a couple yards to Melquan Stovall, as it'll be third and eight. Colorado State has not converted a third down today, which has been detrimental as Pooler takes the snap, only a three-man rush under a little bit of pressure, and he gets sacked, and it's picked up by a lineman, making moves downfield, and that's a first down. Dante Keys, the right tackle. He gave up the pressure technically, he gave up the sack, but he picks up the ball and runs with it. It's our best run on the day by our senior right tackle, who I've been very critical of because of how many sacks he's given up this season. But an amazing play, and now on the next series, it's second and 11, or sorry, same series, but the play after is this is a short dump off. Melquan Stovall gets nine yards. As Colorado State hurries up, it's third and three. As Actually, that's Clay Millen. I just noticed Clay Millen was in at quarterback as he gets us off the Tanner Arkin as he gets 17 yards. As it looks like Cooler has been taken out. wonder if he's okay after he took that huge hit. But Millen fakes and pitches out to A. John Vivens, who has a clear pass to the end zone, and he gets it. A 20-yard touchdown run. That's our best run of the day. Not by an offensive lineman as the option works to perfection. This time, finally, we got a good play as it's a touchdown, and Colorado State is in this game. Although there is 59 seconds left, and San Jose State has been passing well today. First short throw across the middle, caught by Isaiah Hamilton, leads to a timeout by San Jose State. Starkle with Nevins in the backfield will throw another pass as he avoids the guy there but cannot get to the first down, makes it third and two, and I believe Colorado State took a timeout there as it'll be a fake handoff, almost sacked, but a beautiful pass across the middle once again. Isaiah Hamilton gets 13, and San Jose State their second timeout. And now first and 10, almost an offsides call as Starkle throws deep, and it's caught! And that will be a touchdown. Jermaine Braddock, 55 yards, absolutely burned the no doubles defense, as I'd like to call it as San Jose State will take a 21-10 lead into half. And overall, besides that last play, I was very happy with how the first half went. But on that last play, I literally changed the defensive tendency for zone coverage to conservative, which means we were playing the deepest we possibly could, and we still got beat. And I was just really not happy after that. But overall... I mean, sure, Starkle has been passing and Evans has been running, but I think we're in this game. Our offense has been doing pretty solid, you know, despite giving up, what, like seven? Uh, one, two, three. However many sacks it was. Six, I think, actually. As we're now into the third quarter, and it looks like uh, Clay Millen's still out there. Colorado State as he tries to run and he gets sacked. Seven yard loss. That's the thing that got him benched. It's Behoko again. It'll be third and 17 now as Millen's still in. It's a draw to Ajon and that drive goes nowhere for Colorado State as they punt it away. A good one this time as uh, Citizen State comes out for their first uh, offensive position of the second half and it's a sack and that was actually ruled a fumble and it's picked up by Bam Amina San Jose State turns over the ball and Colorado State now has an opportunity Clay Millen still in at quarterback wonder if Giles Pooler is okay as it's first and ten Millen pulls it down tries to get out of the pocket but cannot get back to the line of scrimmage and look who's in the game now. It's Giles Poor. It looks like he was okay. He just got pulled after that fumble. And it's a handoff. This is the running back I've been using, Jalen Thomas. He's built more like Ajon Vivens. And having two of them on the field would be exceptional. 
as it'll be third and nine. Pooler brings Horton across, and he's blitz from his blind side, but he gets it off. It's Tanner Arkin down to the 11, a 22-yard reception for Colorado State. And now, split back, fake handoff on the option play there, and Pooler gets four. Hurrying up once again, Vivens and Thomas still in the backfield as making adjustments to the play. Pooler pulls it down, and he lost the football, and it's picked up by San Jose State. Their turnover is squandered because Colorado State fumbles. Pooler's second of the game. As San Jose State takes over, although the defense this time does not have a short field to defend, it's actually quite a long one. As this pass is caught for a first down, big, a pretty good play there in traffic, as it'll be first and 10 once again. Hand off to Nevins as he is stopped for a two yard loss. Cameron Carter, his second tackle for loss today, as it'll be second and 12. In the pistol formation is San Jose State. It's another handoff to Nevins. This time he gets those yards back. Shoves Cameron to the ground. But it'll be only a six-yard gain. Making it a really important third and six. Can they convert? What comes but does not get there. And this pass is caught. Beautiful pass there and catch by Trayvon Sidney. As San Jose State still moving now at the 45 with a five-wide set. I just think it's a four wide as option not going anywhere. It's deja vu from last week. We couldn't stop the option the first couple times, but Mo Kamara ends up taking him down. And we get the read on one there. As it'll be second and 14. Handoff to Nevins, who gets past the line of scrimmage. Gets eight yards there. Good run to make it third and at least halfway decent. As it'll be third and six. Blitz coming once again. Doesn't get there. And this pass is dropped. San Jose State's receivers have made some good catches today, but they've also dropped a lot of passes. And now, Clay Millen still in at quarterback. Or actually, I think he comes back in at quarterback. As he throws across the middle, and it's caught. Tanner Arkin makes a big catch as Colorado State is nearing 200 yards passing. As Millen throws across the middle again, it's Arkin once more, and he's broken free across the 50 to the 35 down near the 30 a 41 yard reception for the big tight end as Colorado State hurrying up once again second and 11 Millen making adjustments as it will be a throw across the middle and locked or knocked down by Hadari Darden and you get more D's in that name as it'll be third and 11 very big for Colorado State as Pressure comes, but does not get there. It's Torrey Horton, and he only gets eight, but that is something that Colorado State is willing to go for on it, but they do not. They'll actually choose to kick the field goal and get the three points. As another studio update, finally, like the second one this season. I really like these, and it's showing Air Force and San Diego State. Air Force is looking like one of the best teams in the nation this year, or at least a really good option team see if they get ranked if they can hold on against san diego state as cameron carter stops tyler nevins in the backfield his third tackle for loss today as on the next play with time winding down here in the third it's another handoff nevins and this time it's liam huber making the play as he gets his first tackle for loss and he i guess uh, gets revenge for what nevins did to him earlier as it'll be, uh, or not Evans Robinson did earlier. It'll be third and 14. Starkle comes back to pass. Throws short, caught, but rallies the football as Isaiah Hamilton only gets 11. And that'll be a three and out for San Jose State. As it looks like, I think Clay Millen will be in for the rest of the game. Making adjustments now with just under a minute left in third quarter. As Millen pulls it down, and he will get sacked. I don't think uh, Coach Zion appreciates that as Kate Hall gets his second. But at some point, he's got to, you know, stay in the pocket and trust his receivers to get open. He does on this play as he gets that one out to Torrey Horton for 13 yards on third down. It'll make it fourth and one. As trying to decide what play to use here. Colorado State does indeed change their formation, but 
lets the third quarter run out, making it fourth and one to start off the fourth quarter as Millen with Vivens in the backfield on fourth and one from the 34, I think, is incomplete. A pass over the middle was not even close to any receiver. And Colorado State's defense, again, has a short field. And now, see if Citizen State can run out the clock. But lest you forget, Liam Huber, another tackle for loss. Run defense is Colorado State's seemingly their strength, if we have one. As this is a fake to Nevins, but Starkle still goes down. Cameron Carter, his fourth tackle for loss on the day, as it'll be third and long, 17 to be exact. Starkle throws deep across the middle and caught. Travon Sidney, 33 yards inside the five. Cam Ram is not happy, as it'll be first and goal. As Starkle throws short, caught, and Terrence Lowville did get in. Apparently the ball broke the plane. And it's a touchdown, San Jose State. As Colorado State takes over on the next drive, it is a handoff draw to Jalen Thomas. As he's trying to get more involved here. Third and six now, big play for Colorado State, although there's always the option to go for it on fourth down. Millen across the middle, caught! And that will be a first down to Dante Wright. Slowing it down a little bit as they change formation to stacks, and now Vivens is in at running back. But third and 10, as it'll be a short pass complete to Dante Wright again uh, for seven. As it'll be fourth and three in Colorado State, going for it once again, exactly at the 50. So it wouldn't be a short field if they failed, as Millen trying to get everyone to do the right thing, or at least what he wants. As it's a pass, three-man rush across the middle and caught. Panunzio, they give him the first down. It's a four-yard gain as Colorado State hurries to the line once again. As Millen makes an adjustment on second and ten. Throws out and caught. And that is Ty McCullough, who gets 13 yards there. Colorado State still hurrying up. Option play does not go anywhere. Four-yard loss as... San Jose State defended that perfectly. Sets up third and 14 for Colorado State. Five wide set here as Millen takes the snap. Only three men rush across the middle and dropped. Just straight up dropped, no pressure. And what I talked about, not uh, having the team go for it automatically, they went for it there when I didn't want them to. And it was an incomplete pass. As it'll be first and ten, San Jose State stopped on the speed option. Starkle loses four. But that is CJ on Yechi making another big play. As it'll be second and 14. The defense trying to hold Starkle. Quick throw across the middle and caught in a lot of contact. But Isaiah Hamilton falls forward for 14 yards. Third and inches, five wide set. Starkle does not draw across the middle and dropped. On fourth, on third and inches, they threw it and it was dropped. That's it up first and ten after a good punt inside the ten. As Millen still there at quarterback. Clock running low. They might have to call a timeout. They do not as Millen snaps it. Throws deep across the middle. Caught! Ty McCullough diving catch. And it'll be a first down, plenty of room now for CSU. As Millen alone in the backfield, once again, three-man rush. Throw across to A. John Vivens, who does, who was receiver on that play. He gets 16 yards. As Colorado State now moving in chunks, trying to get close enough to tie, or well, to get a touchdown, I should say. Millen pulls it down, gets sacked for two yards. Almost, he had a lane there. I don't blame him for trying to run that one. Does it be second and 12 across the middle and caught Tory Horton, who I feel his name has not been called a whole this a whole bunch this game. As it'll be third and five. Says the state sacks the box. It's not called a blitz though. It's a quick throw out. Tanner Arkin makes the catch for eight. As he has over 100 yards on the day. Third and 10 though. A few plays later as Millen. Throws across the middle. It's caught by McCullough, but he won't get there. It'll be fourth and two. 
They're going to go for it. No chance with only four minutes left to uh, just kick a field goal, in my opinion. As it's a throw across the field to Ty McCullough, who gets them inside the 10. Number six is on fire right now, and Millen is on fire throwing it to him. Second and goal. Touchdown. It's not Ty McCullough. It's Dante Wright, but it's a touchdown nonetheless. As Colorado State now, if they decide to go for a PAT, which they do, is only down eight, which is a touchdown and a PA or an extra, sorry, two point conversion. As Nevins loses two yards there, it's up to the defense. Daquan Jackson was the big guy on that play. Five wide set now. Starkle throws and dropped or broken up, depending on how you want to look at that. But it's third and 12. Big play for the CSU defense. Can Colorado State hold them? As it'll be some motion. Switch from the formation of Colorado State. And it's a draw to Nevins. And they don't get even anywhere near close to the first down. In fact, he loses a yard. Mo Kamara with the big stop. And Colorado State has a chance. They take over. 2.23 left from the 39-yard line. Can Millen try and drive down the field to get the first win? He'll take off on the first play. And he does get hit for two yards. That's not the decision you ideally want to make. And on second and eight now, last play before we go under two minutes. It's a quick throw. Vivens with the catch and gets a first down. The clock stops at exactly two minutes. That's now. Next play, Millen throws and caught by Melquan Stovall for only four. Usually the big play threat is not has not been making big plays today, but we, hit, we have one guy who has, and it's number six. And it's a throw out there to Torrey Horton. He gets a critical 13 yards, a minute 30 left as it's third and 10 as Millen drops back under a little pressure. He gets it to McCullough. He turns up field, trucks a man, and gets the first down, 11 yards as Ty McCullough gets it there. First and 10 as Millen shuffling the pocket throws. It's McCullough again, but he cannot stay on his feet. Only four yards. 116 left. Colorado State called a timeout. Make sure everyone's fresh. It's second and six now. Millen, corner blitz. He pulls it down, but he does manage to escape this time, and he gets about four yards as the clock now goes under a minute, trying to make adjustments. Can Millen do this? He throws. It's caught. It's Ty McCullough fighting inside the 10 for 12 yards. First and goal, 50 seconds left, and, and counting. First and goal. Millen sacked. Won't go anywhere. Colorado State not using their timeout. They're going to hurry up. Second and goal. Millen throws short. I think he hit McCullough again, but it's only for three. Colorado State uses their last timeout. Third and goal. So it'll be 24 seconds to go. Millen takes the snap. And he throws it outside. And I think that might have been caught by Dante Wright. After further review, they say no. It'll be fourth and goal, 20 seconds. P game on the line. Can Millen do it? Making sure all of his receivers are going to the end zone. I did not want him throwing another short route here. As here's this play. Fourth and goal, Millen throws, touchdown! It's Melquan Stovall, big play man shows up. As now, Colorado State needs the two point conversion. And here comes the offense. The most critical play of the entire season right here for Colorado State. As Millen takes the snap, he throws, almost intercepted, Jay Leonard Knocked down, Colorado State will not get the two-point conversion. He tried to go for the deep man, and he might have went out of bounds anyway. But upon further review, come on, man. You had Melquan Stovall. He has a chance there. You have to throw that pass. But onside kick, still a chance left for Colorado State. It's away, and it's recovered by San Jose State by Jermaine Braddock. The guy who had the 55-yard touchdown pass, or touchdown catch earlier, and that is the end of the game. San Jose State now 5-1, Colorado State now 0-5, as we lose by 2. And man, 
The only thing I could think of is we should have won this game. Just... I don't even care that we gave up 12 sacks. Sure, that sucks. We passed for 429 yards. That's like more than the... Like, ever. That's more than the total passing yards we had coming into the game or something stupid. We couldn't run the ball, and I didn't really want to try once the passing game caught fire. Ty McCullough, what a game. 10 for 119. Tanner Arkin also had a great game. Stovall and uh, Horton didn't have the huge games that I, you normally expect. This defense showed up, though. I it, They gave up 28 points, but I am incredibly proud of them for what they did against one of the best teams in the Mountain West right now. All those tackles for loss. The run defense is showing up. And, I mean, I don't even know what to say. Because, like, under 250 passing yards, that's that's a win. No, like, they didn't have 100 rushing yards. Like, it, their quarterback ran for negative yards. That's like us. I literally, like, in every statistical category, you're going to see here in a second, in almost every statistical category, we outdid San Jose State. We outdid the best team in the West Conference of the Mountain West. The West Division, excuse me. We didn't throw a pick. Over 400 yards, and we did not throw a pick. That is miles ahead of what this team has been the first four games. But, like, we had 10 more first downs, more yards. Obviously, we had more passing yards. We had higher third down conversion percentage. We had a better red zone percentage. That we even, Like, we had even turnovers, sure, and that really didn't result in much. But, you know, we had over 500 yards, and we lost this game. We didn't commit a single penalty. It, like, all of this is just saying we should win, and we lost. But regardless of the end, I'm still very happy with how this game went, because at least it proves what I was thinking, that we can compete in the Mountain West. As we see some games around the country, and obviously show you the players of the game and stuff, it was just, you know, I just felt like we should have won, but other than that, I'm really happy because it proves, hey, we can compete with the best in the Mountain West. What do you think is going to happen when we meet the lower teams in the Mountain West? As uh, we get into the next week, we actually have some good news in recruiting. Uh, unfortunately, we have some bad news too. John Burley, the number one recruit in Colorado, he has chosen to go to Oklahoma. Obviously didn't know much about him. Besides, you know, he's a five-star recruit and really good because I only limit my scouting to the preseason. But he has committed to the University of Oklahoma. And that is unfortunate. But we did get a free safety, Justin Larson from Pueblo, Colorado, number 17 uh, free safety in the nation. Uh, we don't know much about him because obviously I did not have a bunch of scouting. <laughs> but uh, I'm less concerned about that. But the big guy who I was actually expecting to commit was Joseph Scales, three-star kicker from Bridge City, Texas. So we have a kicker for next year, and I'm very happy about that. But, you know, I wasn't entirely expecting uh, to have a commit, honestly, this early. I thought it would be a little bit harder, but recruiting has been tough this season. I'm glad we got the first uh, commit out of the way as we're still... Uh, battles on guys chestnut and roth we're losing those and i really want those guys i added some new people to the list white or whitfield john uh the junior guy that was there i also added a quarterback mike adams i think i showed you that last week uh we're starting to move up the board on them and uh yeah we had a couple visits that we need to set up you know, athlete sean howard you know i just like really wanted to get all this uh sort it out and just at least show you guys what's going on because I mean I can't really do <laughs> I, I can't really explain much else because recruiting is a very I have to be looking at it live kind of thing we're probably not going to get Dave Mansfield but I'm still gonna you know at least attempt to pull him away from uh Colorado and but yeah I need to have it up in front of me live for me to actually like be realistic with you on the chances <laughs> of us getting somebody as a uh, Number six, Baylor fell to Kansas State uh, in their first real big game of the season. Also, Washington State team we played, they lost, or they sorry, they beat Oregon State at home, so they gave them fits. As uh, see the top stories here, some really good games happening around. So far, nothing shocking has really happened. 
uh, as far as you know rankings and stuff goes. Heisman race though, it's looking weird. We have an uh, Army quarterback and an Air Force running back in there, but uh, our next game, it's a big one. It's the border war against Wyoming. And looking at these ratings, I'm really happy. We can do this. Like they're, They are worse than us rating-wise, and statistically, they're about on our level. This is going to be a game we can win. They've had some tough losses. They lost at Nebraska against Air Force and Utah. And, and they've beaten, you know, Texas State, who's kind of bad, FCS team, obviously. But this team is very, very similar to our level. And I think we could win. I'll see you guys next episode for that. Thank you all for watching. See you all later.